Oops. Microprocessors need a constant supply of power in order to function correctly. This power is provided by maintaining a constant voltage across the power and supply pins. Generally, these pins are labeled VCC and GND, or VDD and VSS. If the supply voltage dips for a duration on the order of nanoseconds, there is generally enough internal power bus capacitance to keep the internal logic and memory from experiencing a significant voltage drop. If the supply voltage dips for a duration on the order of tenths of a second or more, the processor will generally be reset, and all volatile memory and logic will return to its initial power on state. This short demonstration illustrates what can happen when a drop in the supply voltage is long enough to affect the internal logic, but not long enough to reset the processor. Here, we've powered up an evaluation board for an automotive microcontroller. The microcontroller is mounted in a socket on the board and is powered by an external supply. The board has three main functions. Pressing button number one causes a row of LED lights to light up indicating the position of this potentiometer. Pressing button number two causes the lights to indicate the position of a potentiometer to the left of the first one. Pressing button number 3 causes the microcontroller to compare the positions of the two potentiometers. If the resistance of the potentiometer on the left is higher, the LED will light up. If the potentiometer on the right has the higher resistance, the LED doesn't light. We have the ability to drop the supply voltage to zero momentarily simulating a brief short or a power dip due to load switching. The DC voltage that powers this board is supplied through a transient test system and the supply voltage is monitored on an oscilloscope. When there is a power loss lasting more than a tenth of a second or so, the processor resets itself. No matter which function it was performing, it returns to function 1. For example, the processor is currently set to perform function 3. The LED is comparing the positions of the two potentiometers and lighting if the potentiometer on the right has a higher resistance than the potentiometer on the left. Now let's drop the supply voltage briefly by manually shorting out the source. All the LEDs light up and we can see that they are indicating the position of the potentiometer on the right. This is function 1. Pressing button number 2 again causes the lights to indicate the position of the potentiometer on the left. With another dip in the supply voltage, the processor resets and we are back to function 1. Let's see what happens when we drop the voltage for a time long enough to deplete the stored charge in the decoupling capacitors, but too short to reset the processor. In this case, we'll set the transient test system to drop the voltage for 38 milliseconds. First, we'll verify that the processor is still performing function 1. Now we'll dip the power for 38 milliseconds as recorded on our oscilloscope. We see that the processor which had been performing function 1 is suddenly performing function 2. Pressing button number 1 returns the processor to function 1, and the processor is performing normally. We'll repeat the 38 millisecond power dip, and now we see that the processor has spontaneously switched to function 3. Each time the processor board experiences a power dip on the order of 38 milliseconds, its state changes randomly. There is no damage to the board or its components, and there is no lasting evidence that a malfunction ever occurred. It's important to keep this in mind when designing embedded systems, particularly in safety-critical situations. Dips in the power supply voltage are essentially unavoidable. They can be caused by brief shorts in the power distribution bus, brief disconnections, load switching, coupled transients, supply switching, and component malfunctions. 
We can reduce the probability of power supply voltage dips by providing adequate decoupling and battery backups. But these measures can't ensure that a processor will never experience a dip in the supply voltage. That's why, in safety critical or mission critical situations, it is important to ensure that the software is designed to respond appropriately when there are unexpected changes in the memory contents or logic flow. In these situations, it is a good idea to have other independently powered processors that monitor the system and can take over in the event that the primary processor malfunctions. For more information, you can review the Learn EMC tutorial on voltage transients. You may also want to review the information on automotive systems on the Clemson Vehicular Electronics Laboratory website.